Hello, it's Sarah. And I'm getting ready to cover one of these boxes that I got. It's actually not a box. It's called a... Um, oh, man. I took the wrappers off them all. I got them on clearance at Michael's. I'll tell you what they're called because I have the I have the bigger ones over here. Artwood cradle boards. That's what they're called. Cradle boards. That's what I was trying to think of. And it's basically just a box without a lid, kind of sort of thing. Um, and these were on clearance, and I just thought they'd be super cute to put polymer clay on. And so yesterday. I made this. Actually, it was uh, Friday. Yeah, Friday I made this. Today's Sunday, yeah. Um, and I want to make another one. So let me come in and show you. What, I'm, what I really loved about this one now, I've been sharing my Dragon's Eyes, and I've done this one on a uh, tin, and this one based on a tutorial that I took by Chris Capono. And I followed her tutorial her tutorial to do these but they're all in one color so it's one color of clay and then she um, you do a patina which is with paint you paint it over the paint gets stuck in all the nooks and crannies and then you highlight bits of it with rub and buff or metallic rubs um, that's how you get make it look dimensional um, and it changes it up a bit she also uses like uh, what's it called? Um, this one. My brain isn't working. Glossy accents to highlight areas too. So I've been doing it that way and then it occurred to me I took another class. Last year I took the uh, Palmer Clay Adventure and Chris taught this piece in there and I've shared this previously and I remembered that with this one, she used a blend of clay. So, it, and, and I didn't do too good of a job on it, so it'll be hard to tell. But you can kind of tell there's a strip of brown going through the middle of this. And then both these sides, this is a little more goldish brown, and then this is green. So it's three colors, and then you incorporate three colors or more. And then she actually had an accent color in here as well. So I remembered that, and I was like, well, what the heck? I really like that better. So when I made this dragon's eye, that's what I did. And I, and I actually just used scraps, so I can't even tell you what colors these were. I know I used some of this light green, this green, and then I think the base color, the, the color that I used to cover the entire thing, was a mix. And I ran out of the mix, and then I used... A little bit of a lighter version of it on two sides so this was just kind of a, um, a trial with mixing the clays but I really like how it turned out because not only do you see the differences with the textures that you use and the patina and the um, accents with the rub and buff you also see the different colors of clay and it, it just makes it more visually interesting and I added a ton of bling on here. I put crystals all across the top. I just got into my jewelry stash and pulled things that, like, there's a kind of, I mean, I didn't, Im I don't know if that has too much. This one, where is the other one? This one. This one's just like a, <coughs> it was that chain that I get, the, the bling chain. And I cut a piece off, but it's a much bigger piece of bling chain. I used two pieces of that. A gem and this gem looks cool because it's a yellow gem but then when I squished it into the clay the green clay is kind of shining through it's like making it two-toned so I like this but man you really see a lot of the the sparkle from those um, crystals and I I always say it but if you can get them on sale use a, a coupon or get them on clearance and that's what I do whenever I'm in the store and I happen to see any gems and they weren't the best colors the last time I got them. I went yesterday and I got a couple because I also remembered that you can change the colors of gems with your Sharpies, guys. 
So you don't need pink, green, and blue, and purple when you have, which I got these on clearance, $1.50 yesterday at Michael's. This bling chain that I just break off. I take my, this is like a, I don't know, and I've really damaged it. So, I mean, I've, I'm very harsh on all my equipment. I'm very harsh with it. And, I mean, I do think you guys should be a lot more gentle. But, in general, uh, I will just pop that off like so. Ooh. And now I can color this any color I want. So I decided to, because I was looking for colors, and then I just like, hello, you can color. So yesterday I colored, this is yellow, light pink. I did another one, I think I used it. I think I used my blue, hold on. Because these were white. But... I have a lot of different color Sharpies, so I could make these any color I want. And I needed some bigger ones. I have lots of little colors, but I, I wanted some bigger ones. And these were, let me see, oh, I have this. This is the Swarovski uh, Flatbacks. But you know what they also sell? And I just saw a good video about this when they have the um, heat and bond or something. I forget. Get the heat and bond because when you, you don't need to glue these. See, I just push them into the clay and the clay kind of holds them into place. But there's, some of these have, see this shows the little glue symbol on here. So you have to glue these in. But they sell them with the heat set type, right? Get those and then when you bake it, it'll be, it's an extra bond. So, okay, so this is just, and then on the sides, I just texturized it and put, I didn't put any gems or anything. I just put clay, little different nodules. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it looks like the moon. You know, craters and different. And then I used um, glossy accents to make things sparkle. Um, so, yeah. So, that's what I'm... I just wanted to... Today, I'm just going to show you how I get the clay onto this uh, cradle box, I guess it's called, right? So all I've done is um, gessoed the wood. And gesso is a sealer that it also, in painting, it can create tooth on a piece and it creates texture. But in this case, I just sanded it down. So now the wood is sealed. It's a non-porous surface. And it's also smooth so that my clay will lay. And it probably would be fine if it was a little toothy too. Um, I've taken... See if I can remember these clays. And I'm instead of using scraps, I wanted to use specific colors because um, that way I could kind of tell you what I used instead of winging it. Um, this is um, Peacock Pearl. These are all Primo colors. This is Turquoise Primo. And this is called White Glitter, oh, Yellow Gold Glitter. I used three pieces of the bro blit brick. <coughs> three pieces of the brick of each of these. So I only have one piece left, but this is what I'm going to use to make my swirls and my design. I just need, I figure that'll be enough. I hope it will. Um, because I needed enough yesterday. I, like I said, I ran out and I didn't have enough to cover the box. So I need a lot of clay. So this is pretty good. This is rolled out. I would say like a five on my pasta machine because I want it to be thick enough to make indentions in it and have some somewhere for the gems to stick in there. I'm gonna, sorry, I shouldn't be zoomed in. Um, and I used two bricks of the glitter because I wanted it to have glitter too as well. So there's glitter in here. So three of each of the colors and only two of the gold. And I blended it and mixed it and mixed it all together to make kind of a blend so that all these colors will play together. When I, when I make the, the actual dragon's eye. And then you get your dragon's eye. I just use a black paint pen and make a pupil on here. And I'm not sure which one I'm going to use yet. Um, I've got that ready to go. Uh, and then some gems and stuff. So this is what I will do. Now, I used, yesterday I used my Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive. 
and it works great. But then I remembered that I have Bacon Bond, and this is by Sculpey. So I think I'm gonna try this today, and basically it's like a white glue, but it's a bakeable adhesive. So I'm gonna try this. Hopefully it's old. Oh no, it's coming out of there. I have a pin. Just clear the... Seems good. Oh, I was inviting people to Maya's party today. My husband's, anyway. So I'm just gonna put a coat. You see, I don't even know if this is flowy. Flowy, is that a word? There we go. It's not really coming out. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna open it. Ooh. And do it that way. It's messy. But I'm gonna. Oh man. I think I'm gonna use a little bit of water. Who called back? Emily. Yay! Hey, Mama. Are you leaving? I love you. Um. So I'll work on calling people, okay? Okay, but uh, I'll see you next week. Okay, I love you. Bye. Well, this is. This is a lot thicker than um, <laughs> than the other glue was. So hopefully I'm going to take my time now and focus. Everybody's it back in the house. They were all in the pool. But I'm going to try and uh, get this on here as neatly as I can. And you know what I should have done first? Now I'm going to do it this way. Okay. So I'm basically just going to take this and drape it across so that I don't get any air holes. Push it down. Oh yeah, I'll be right back. All right, I had to say goodbye to Maya. Her birthday's Tuesday, um, and we won't see her on Tuesday. Her mommy has her anyway. So I've, hopefully this, and then my camera didn't turn on, so I don't know if it was on, but um, I've added bacon bond to the wood and just laid the clay on top and now I'm going to take my blade and just gently, and this is wood, so you kind of have to be a little careful. But you just, I could pull it probably. My bird is cheaping. She hears me talking. When I when she hears me talking, she wants to be involved. So that's basically it. You want to make sure there's no air bubbles. That's the only problem, and I think there is one right there. So I'm gonna I'll put this through the machine again and get it to, uh, but, um, you know what, I'm not even going to texturize it yet. There is, it seems like there's a little air bubble right here. I'm just going to see if I can press it out. We're going to put so much texture on here and everything. That should be fine. Alright, so that's how I cover my box. Well, I'll do the same thing. Let's, I'll do another side for you. Try to get it small enough to fit through the machine. Ugh. And this is on five or... Hey, Joe. Yeah. Can you close the door? Let me see. Yeah, I think that's on a five. So I'm going to do the same thing. Take the bacon bond. Just a little bit. Oh, geez. It's not very flowy. 
it's stiff. It's quite stiff actually compared to like regular white glue. So I'm just spraying it a little to get it to move. I don't know if that ruins the, the adhesion, but it sure feels sticky. And I'm smoothing it out. And I'm going to do the same thing. Just lay this right over the surface. Hopefully, you know what you should do it like slowly like that. Like push the air bubbles out. And I have a, yes, again, I'm just going to cut away. When I go up against the clay area, it'll be a little more tricky. I think I'll lay it down and do it that way. And then it all I'm getting kind of sometimes I like to go like this actually kind of rock it on the corner and it kind of joins them just pinch it this is all going to get texturized there's, there's an air bubble under there though I'm going to have to get that out created an opening and then I push the air that way. Hopefully that'll get rid of it. Does that seem good? You know, you can bevel it too. Let's see if I if I do this, I could ruin it. But I don't think it did. I think I'm going to just do it that way. And I think that's going to work better. So I would do that around the whole entire, this is kind of sliding too. So I should have enough uh, clay. <clears throat> to do this whole thing, I'm hoping. I'll do, I could probably do Nah, I'll roll it out again. Alright, I'm going to come back when I have it all done and I'll show you how I um, texturize it. I'll be right back. Alright, I decided just to keep going because I want to say I'm no expert at this, you guys. Like, I um a self-taught <laughs> clayer based on I mean I've taken a couple classes yes but see it is it moves when you have the uh bacon under it I have I've taken some classes and I like to share my knowledge but I don't feel uh like my word is you know the end all wait this looks like it has a hole too I mean an air bubble um so just know that I don't want to I don't know I, I have never used bacon bond before so I don't feel like really comfortable knowing what I'm doing with that like adding that water makes me a little nervous but I, it is a water based product so I'm sure it's fine you know um, I think I can bevel this edge too. That worked fine.
uh, and I just found someone, um, a Claire. She's called the Mad Housewife, I'm pretty sure. I'm going to put the link for her in the description box. And she's new. She's only got, she has about, she already has about 700 um, subscriptions, but she's only been making videos for like three months. Um, she does a lot of tips and tricks. And she. I just watched one, I wish I knew this when I first started claying stuff like that so uh, I'm gonna put a link to her channel in the description box because um, there are a lot more knowledgeable people than I am I just love to make things and play and in this medium I don't feel like I'm the that I've been doing it long enough to really have all the answers for you guys that's what I'm trying to say I just wing it and do it and it turned they turn out pretty good but like I don't know um, I'm just letting you know that okay I just wanted to let you know that I'm gonna bevel this edge too because I like that now I like the way that looks all right so I'm going to continue covering my box and I'll be right back all right, I'm all, I'm all on there, and I beveled the outside edge, but there are tons of fingerprints all over this, and that's something else that um, oh, the Mad Housewife. I'm going to connect you to that because she, I just saw a video, the five things she wishes she knew when she was a beginner clayer, and one of them was about fingerprints, one's about bacon bond, one is about. Um, pre-baking like you can I could go bake this well I want to texturize it first and then I won't have to worry about messing it up I'm actually not going to do that because that's something I'm not that familiar with but it is a possibility is all so I just kind of smoothed it out and now I'm going to texturize it and by that <coughs> I, in the past, I've used um, my fishy, it's like this little Macon's texture sheet. This is called, I don't know, but it's like fish scales. And I've that's what I put on the back of here, and that looks cool. But I'm just going to use random stamps, anything you have. I actually used um, these three stamps on my other one, and I'm going to do that again. This is just, um, I think it's a Lisa Pavelka and it's called Say It. Um, I just like these words, this writing one, a script I should say. So I'm just gonna hit it here and there and I'm really pushing hard and that was probably a little too hard. The clay seems a little soft. Um, but I'm gonna put some of this all around the piece here and there and this is where the mixed media again comes into play and that's why I love it so much I'm using stamps you could use any texturizing tool on this something that's firm is best probably to because it needs to uh, make it in a nice indention into the clay. Then I'm going to use a piece of what else? I, I, I liked this one because it had X's and O's. Like I was trying to get that X and O pattern on here. There it is. And by the end I might you might not be able to see a lot of it. But I like that XO pattern. Kind of, I want to hold it so I don't smush the sides. And this is what she was talking about when she said, you can pre-bake this. Like after I'm done this, maybe bake it for five or ten minutes. 
and it'll hold better than and I won't put fingerprints in it so I'm just pushing down that XO shape and let's see I don't know why that appealed to me I just liked it and I thought well I don't need the whole the whole stamp just that little section with a few XO's and then do I have it everywhere I'm gonna use this is a Tim Holtz stamp where did I put it yeah right here so this has a little bit of a swirl to it like a heart and then there's little flowers and like dots it's kind of like a grungy looking swirly and I just like the textures that it gives and of course that's going to be under the under the eye so I'm going to pop a few of these into some blank areas and I'm not going to pre-bake this but I'm just telling you that because uh, she mentioned it and I've not tried it but she said it's a lifesaver and maybe in this project it won't matter as much but and I can see it being very important in other pat in other things but see I don't mind getting fingerprints on here or anything my sides are looking really good I'm gonna just put this down actually I think I want to I squished the bevel out on the bottom I am so rough you guys it's just part of who I am not gentle like when I'm not a light touch put it that way and so I'm gonna try I'm gonna put a few swirls just see if they even right on top it's like a heart shape but that's a lot of texture let me come in so all of that is going to be underneath whatever else I add <clears throat> when I add my swirls, when I add my comma strokes, my gems and my dots and my circles and my bling, anything, you know, I mean, that's all going to be just extra. So I like it. I think I'm good. I'm going to um, consider that done. And like I said I think you could put this in the oven and you wouldn't have to worry about it getting mushed or anything and I just don't I don't I've never done it and I don't wanna kinda do that at the moment because I know that I that it works the other way and so I just I just wanna continue on this way alright so that's it I think I'm gonna call it and uh, go ahead and do my dragon's eye maybe when because I already did a tutorial on the actual making of the eye maybe the next video I'll come back and I'll show you how I'm adding different textures with the different colors so now I have these three colors of gr blue I have the actual um, oh I'm still zoomed in sorry Charlie the turquoise pearl now this was called peacock pearl turquoise and then this is a blend of the two of those and a little bit of this gold glitter yellow gold glitter and then I'll use this too I think I'll use the gold glitter as an accent as well so I'll just break a piece of that off and so I'm gonna create my dragon's eye and use these different colors to accent everything and I'll maybe come back with another uh, video but for now, that's it. Alright guys, thanks for watching.